live? We live? Are we, <laughs> <laughs> Are we on air? Yes, this is the Norm Park Podcast. <laughs> Christian Podcast. Christian Bible Study Podcast. What's up, everybody? What's popping out there in these streets, man? Let us know what's going on, man. Where we read God's word and we talk about it. 2024, baby. Yo, we haven't told people to subscribe, I don't know, over here. Like over here. I thought here. that was your office, right? <laughs> I mean, it's better late than never. He finally right. did it. He didn't, like wait to, he didn't wait till the wrap up show to do it. <laughs> like and subscribe. You know, I don't know if it's somewhere over there or somewhere over there. <laughs> Check out our previous episode over here. Following. <laughs> it's free, B. The like is free. We ain't asking you to hit the PayPal button or the cash app <laughs> or the Venmo, son. Yo. We just asking you it to hit that. the like. It's for that. We be starving dead. <laughs> we ain't asking no, we you don't. to hit the word up. We just asking you to hit that thumbs up, or babe. Subscribe, like, share. <laughs> what else do they do? <laughs> That's it. That's remix. All you they got remix, right? Where you remix something? I don't know. Um, What is that? A uh, little dance to it? I don't know. What's that, Nate? A stitch? Mm. <laughs> or TikTok? <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah, man. Do a review. That's what it's called, right? A review. Something Write a like review. That. Yeah, yeah right, that's right. actually a good idea. Yeah, do the split screen. But uh, yeah. mm. be blessed, man. That's that's first and foremost. That's what we want. We pray that you guys bless us as much as we are. Even if you got a problem with it, even if you want to blast it, yeah, blast do us. it, do it, be yeah. blast it. Be like, yo, these guys is wrong. Corny. I can't believe y'all still believe in the we Bible. Right, we corny. Yo, don't blast me, man. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> Express yourself, cats. man. Whatever beef y'all got, you know. Right. I mean, y'all gonna be wrong, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jonah chapter three. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're moving along in this long book. <laughs> can't believe we can't believe we more than halfway through the book, man. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> you remember what we did, that's, Genesis? That's, that's PTSD Yo, from Genesis. Oh, 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 oh. Yo, I, Stupid idea was to do Genesis. I feel like we still He's do an it, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Whose stupid idea was to do Genesis? He's an idiot. That was crazy, bro. Yo, that was <laughs> Genesis was fun. Yeah, that was yo, fun. but we went through Genesis. Yeah, man. Y'all gotta show us some love for that. Like, we <laughs> Word went through up. Genesis chapters. verse by verse. Boy. Word up. <laughs> Even read the man, names. Go, yeah, go find yourself a podcast that did that. <laughs> yo, y'all been taking. Well, we did the two most important books, B. John. John and Genesis, dog. Everything and else. Romans. Yeah. Don't, 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 and Romans. Don't forget about yeah, Romans, Romans, baby. Yeah, yeah, Romans, yeah. yeah. Romans, definite. Romans, definitely. Romans, definitely. I mean, the yeah. three most important books, B. Yeah. Yo. What else after that? Yo, I mean, we could basically retire right now. I think we did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think a lot of people probably think we I think this is a guest appearance, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think we doing guest appearances now. That's it. We just pop up. <laughs> oh, we had some man. time today. Oh, man. Um, yeah, so last week we were talking about uh, Jonah's prayer. Um, anybody want to share? Now, was anybody that go? his own psalm, or was that bits and pieces of other psalms? Uh, I, that was his. That was his prayer, but the style, you know, the yeah. style was almost poetic, and just the imagery. A lot of stuff that he's saying is, you know, Come probably from things just from previous the culture songs too. I, I think. Yeah, this is it's very yeah, Jewish. But it was definitely his prayer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Actually, each verse like was actually from, like a psalm. A, a psalm. psalm. Like yeah. you know, it was Psalm one twenty. I think Psalm. Uh, actually, I wrote it down. Like each each verse. Was yeah, actually alluding was. to one of the psalms, yeah. So show you that he knew the scriptures well, wow. Because he didn't, he didn't. I mean, in the belly of the well, he didn't have a oh, Bible. He didn't have his scroll. He had the Bible app. <laughs> <laughs> so that mm. shows you how well versed he was. I mean, but that's awesome. Like he was praying scripture, right? Right. And that's something that I always tell myself: you know, learn scripture enough to pray it. You know, and yeah. I never really do. Right. That's that's how you pray in God's will, right? Yeah, you use, he can't turn that down, right? You use His words, right? Well, yeah. God, you said this, yep. right? Yep. You know what I'm saying? So that's mm-hmm. definitely um, the 
the standard of, of prayer. Yeah. Not excluding, you know, Jesus's model that, you know, he taught with mm. the Father's, the Lord's Prayer. All right, I got a question. Do you think <clears throat> this was a near-death experience, or do you think he Whoa. died? <laughs> near-death. Yes. Why would you say it's near-death, and it was not actual? Died for a couple seconds, couple minutes, and got... Because I think verse 6 tells us that if he says, Yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. So to me, I feel like he saved him prior to him moving on. No, I'm not saying that he, he like, I mean, obviously Jonah <laughs> was alive. But I'm talking about he died and then came back to life. Like got resuscitated. But he nah. was like, he, he was probably dead for a couple minutes, maybe an hour, maybe a couple seconds. But experienced death I don't like do you think that I don't think that yeah. I don't My, think I don't think he died I think I, <coughs> I think the like the language that he uses that expression um kind of describes you know his his uh situation he was in dire straits but if did he physically die I don't believe he physically died he Which, was on the cusp of dying <laughs> what you, you think know? what you think Ralph I think he died. Hmm. Why you say I think. that? Like some of the words, like he, um, from verse two, he says, I called out the Lord out of my distress and he answered me out of the belly of Sheol. Mm -hmm. He specifically used the word Sheol. And then um, when you go into six, the, he says at the roots of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Mm -hmm. And one of the times that they use the word bars is like, I think it's in, is actually in Job. Um, I think it's Job chapter 17 when they use the word bars, he's actually talking about like, you know, sh you know, Sheol closing his gates mm -hmm. on someone. So I personally think that he actually died. And also with the illusion when Christ says, this is the one miracle that I'm a, the one sign is the sign of Jonah. You know, the three days in the belly. So, I mean, the things that, you know. It, it varies. It varies because the things that I've I've read the different scholars. There's some scholars that, you know, say that he didn't die, and there's other scholars that say that he did die. So you have, you know, varying opinions on this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, but the the word doesn't say that he died. We know that he was alive. He was spit out alive, right? No, I'm not. I'm not saying that he wasn't alive. Like I said, so it's obvious. Died. But no, he I died know, and then came back that, to but life. What I'm yeah. saying is, there's nothing here that is obvious to to make that an opinion. In my so why even think that? Out of the belly of Sheol, Sheol. I cried. But didn't you, well? First of all, didn't you just say that all of these are previous psalms mm -hmm. that he's praying? Mm -hmm. Right. So these were already scripture that he was praying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't not. It wasn't necessarily. It was how he was feeling at the time. Okay. It wasn't necessarily what happened to him. Mm -hmm. And um, thinking of him being in the middle of the ocean about to die feels like hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? I no, think I, his I feelings understand. were that. That's, right. I just, so I, I, to yeah. me, it's, it's poetic expression. Mm -hmm. um, trying to you know, use imagery to describe how he was feeling at the time. Um, you know, I think David used those type of languages, you know, Sheol, like, oh, I'm in the pits, where, where, you know what I'm saying? I, so I don't think he died. I think he almost, he was near death. Mm. I think him dying takes away from the fact that the Lord rescued him. Why? Right? Why I you just feel that? like. That would be greater. Yeah. If no. he died and he brought him back to life. Yep. If you think about it that way. I mean, if that was the case, I think it would be obvious here that he died and the Lord brought him back to life. I, I don't think we would, the Lord would want us to read between the lines and say, did he die? Like to me, it's like the Lord rescued him. Mm -hmm. He almost died. He was about to, like we talked about, he, he thought that the only way to make things right between him and God was for him to die. But if we're seeing this as the grace of God, then the Lord saved him before he died. So, but that's just my opinion. What do you think? I I I think he did die. Like after reading it again and again, I don't know how long. What I what I look at it as is more you know, you have so many stories about people who 
you know, they'll tell you straight up and down. I was clinically dead for, let's say, a couple minutes, a couple seconds, however it was, and then they saw the white light. Like, you've heard so many stories about that, and I think that's what he experienced. Mm -hmm. I think he experienced a, a point where, you know, I don't know how long it was for. Maybe it was for a couple minutes. Maybe it was a couple, a couple of seconds, but I think he did taste that because of <clears throat> his whole point, again, going back to three, is he wanted to get away from the presence of God. Mm. You know, that was his whole thing. I want to get away from your presence. And, you know, while I was reading it, I was like, you know, the only thing to me where you're totally away from the presence of God is being in hell. And for him to use the word, he says, I was out of the belly of Sheol. Like he says it like, you know, that's where I cried out from. It's like, this is what you wanted. God gave it to you. And then you realize that's not what you really wanted. And you cried out. And again, I go back to just so many people have so many accounts of, you know, they tell you, you know, medically, clinically, I was dead for three minutes, for five minutes, for 10 minutes, however long it was. And then I, you know, I went, saw the white light, saw the gate, saw all these people and da, 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 da. They give you this account of, or they'll give you a kind of hell where they was in hell and they saw the devil and such and such, such and such. And they came back to life. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's what he experienced. So. As the, the word says, to, to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. Mm -hmm. So as a believer, if he died, he would be in the presence of God. Okay. Right? He wouldn't be no. in Sheol. No. He would, right? No. He'll be in Abraham's, Abraham's well, I, well, bosom yeah, well, Sheol. In, well, but that's not what he's describing here is not him chilling in Abraham's bosom with the good guys. No, but the things that being in Sheol, remember like when we spoke about Sheol is divided into two places, right? Yeah. There's the... So, the part where the fire. Right. And then Abraham's and then, bosom. Exactly. So that's the thing. It's like you're saying that he's in Sheol. Right. So, exactly. So that's that, That's the general compartment. Right. Yeah, right? that's the he whole says, thing. Yeah. yeah, that's the whole thing. You know, and he says, this but is where I went. as a believer, he would be in Abraham's bosom. Right. So it, he wouldn't be but experiencing he, what's his, being what he's describing out of is, the sight of God. Yeah, it's negative he, what he's yeah, describing. He's describing. So I, again, I don't think he died clinically dead i okay. think you know he had his a real he got real close to dying okay. and he just experienced um something bad no i listen you know I, I i mean and yeah i, I, I see yeah I, way, I see but. where people lean toward that and the other reason why i towards again is like what ralph said with you know him being the typology of christ i want to go to that let's go to that <laughs> read it what about that, the belly what is it matthews 12 Oh, where Christ yeah, Matthew's it. 12. Because when you... I apply that specifically to the time frame. Or just the three days? That's what he was saying, right? Because the situation was... Jews coming up to him like, oh, give us a sign, give us a sign. And this is right after he just uh, uh, delivered somebody from demonic possession. And they was like, oh, this guy is, is you know, using the power of Satan to, to, to free people. And he's like, mm. this is after he fed the multitude. This is after he clearly was telling everybody who he is. Uh, what is it, 12 and what? 12, so like 39, 38. All right. You want me to read it? What is that, Matthews? Matthews, yeah. yeah. Matthew yeah. 12, I'm going to start reading verse 38. Mm -hmm. It says, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to ex it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Mm -hmm. the men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. Yeah. Mm. So that's, that's the only part I apply to the typology is that time period of three days. So that's, that's kind of like the sign. Mm -hmm. He's pretty much saying, listen, the sign that you're going to get now is the resurrection because God is dealing in front of you guys now. Mm -hmm. And what else he connects with Jonah is like, Jonah, who was in rebellion, 
went to Nineveh and those guys got saved. Mm -hmm. Those guys believed. You guys got somebody <laughs> like you guys got somebody greater than Jonah. And you mm -hmm. see, Jonah didn't do no signs. Jonah didn't yeah. do no miracles. And he was like, yeah, I've, I've been with you guys all this time during my ministry. I've done all these things. You had plenty of signs. You guys are just wicked. Well, he's an adulterous generation. Mm -hmm. You guys don't want to really believe. Mm -hmm. You want a spectacle. And he was like, and he compares that, like the people of Nineveh is going to be looking at y'all in Judgment Day. So the only thing I take is 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 the three days. Like that's the part that he focuses on, like to kind of tell them after three days, I'm going to rise from the dead. Mm -hmm. So everything else, you know, Jonah was disobedient. Christ wasn't. Christ was obedient, perfect till the end. Mm -hmm. Jonah was outside the will of God. Christ was. So there's no other comparison except that three days, which he specifically says. And, um, you know, obviously the deliverance through the word of God, through the truth, and, you know, somebody lesser, them, and them knowing the history, them knowing the history of Jonah, them knowing what happened, them having that record. Mm -hmm. And the people got saved based on less. And he was like, y'all, the generation that was given the word that had this special position in ministry to evangelize to the world, I came like blood through you guys, and I'm here, and you guys still, you know what I'm saying? So... I isolated just just the three days. Okay. What do you think, Mike? I'm gonna save it for the wrap up. All right. <clears throat> I feel different. Bro. I'll I mean, for the wrap up. I, it, I mean the the like the one thing like I'll I'll say in terms of um like like another reason why I say is the that he died in terms of like w in conjunction with. Um, with the typology is that in First Corinthians 15, when it talks about um, the gospel, right? Let me just read it. Um, what you at Matthew? What you in Matthew? No, no. I mean first. I mean First Corinthians when he says um. More of a brethren, First Corinthians 51, he says, More of a brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, in which you stand by, which also you are saved by, if you hold fast, um, that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered you to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, and according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Right? Mm -hmm. So he said, according to the scriptures. Now, where do we have, because this is, he's writing before the New Testament. Well, he's, he's like in the period of the New Testament. Now, where was it prophesied of Jesus' resurrection? Because we have his death. We have his burial in Isaiah 53 and tons of um, scriptures, you know, Genesis 315. We got all these scriptures of his death, you mm -hmm. know, and Psalms 22 of his crucifixion. And all that. Where will you go to show someone his resurrection in the Old Testament? Because he says, "As it is, as it is written." Mm -hmm. Got to go somewhere because because this is where Paul is pulling it from. He's pulling that all of this was his resurrection, the three days and everything. That's in the Old Testament. So we have to be able to prove it to someone right. that all of that was written. Because you can't you can't use Isaiah fifty three because it doesn't doesn't talk about the resurrection in Isaiah fifty three. Right. It just talks about his death. And I see. Um Oh, let's go through the chapter, okay. and, I, and, I'll, and, right, I'll, so and I'll, I'll agree with your point even more because I've seen something. Okay. Let's go through the chapter. So Jonah 3? Yeah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Keep going, or? Yeah, 
we could talk about that. Yeah, no, we could talk about that. Mm-hmm. So the word of the Lord came a second time. I agree with you. This is when, yeah, the word of the Lord. It came to him the first time. He rebelled. Yeah. I believed the Lord didn't deal with him. It was just straight actions. Yeah. Like chastisement, storm. Oh, you want to run away? Storm. Oh, you want to yeah. keep acting up? Yo, get thrown into the sea. Oh, you still want to? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yo, go to the depths of the sea. Like, I think everything was action, and I think this is when... You know, the word of the Lord came to him the second time. Mm -hmm. And then he hit him. He says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. You see, this time he leaves wicked. He leaves their wickedness out. Mm. Mm. You know, the first time he says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. This time he says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So he leaves out the wickedness. Mm. You know, Why do you he, think that's important? I think because the Lord was preparing Nineveh, he was. He, they were. Prepared, they were ready, you know. Like if you like, you know. I think at this point, Jonah is ready to preach the message, and Nineveh is ready to receive it. But why? So, huh? But why are they ready? Because remember, we talked a little bit about things that have to happen in our own lives to be susceptible to be ready. So, what happened in Nineveh that makes them ready to hear the word? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think curious. there's anything yeah. specific. All right. Well, I, I read something where it says during that time, two plagues happened. Okay. During that time. So they went through two plagues, the city of Nineveh, mm. during 765 BC and 759 BC. Um, in 763, a total eclipse where the sun happened on June 15, where they had a total eclipse yeah, in the city. That, yeah. And, you know, um, these were considered signs of divine anger. Mm. It might, you know, again, there was the Lord, there was things happening supernatural in the city where people were like, something's going on. Okay, yeah, they, I mean, they that makes sense. They realized something yeah. was going on. So if you go through two plagues and you go through a total eclipse where there's nothing but darkness, mm. yeah. so I think there was, you know, and that's that's historical that happened in the city of Nineveh during the time of Jonah. So, Or it could have been natural things <clears throat> that, they attributed to their because remember they're pagan right mm -hmm. so right they attributed certain things to you know their god another thing i read is you know they worship the god they they gone they gone which is a fish, fish. right yeah right, 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 and right, right imagine right, right. you know the assyrians seeing a man crawl out of a fish <laughs> right <laughs> how that would have impacted a that yeah. culture right and mm -hmm. people right. start talking and, and stuff like that so Ultimately, we know that it's the power of God. Um, now, you think that they saw him being spit out? I don't know. I mean, <sighs> I don't know, but maybe, possibly. I, I think it's something where he probably needed help. Mm. Three days, you're you're in the belly with the gastric yeah, acid. Like You're not coming out. But you're normal. just brushing yeah, off I'm pretty sure shoulders. he is. I mean, yeah, at he the end of the day, look, if the Lord is in it, you could be. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. what I'm saying, from what I was reading, that he was about 400 miles or so from the city right. where he was spit out. So whether or not... So he had to journey three days. Yeah. So now... To get to, to the end of it, right? Yeah. To but get I, maybe to the center... Oh, wait, oh, no. This is saying that the three-day journey is from one part of Nineveh yeah, to, right. to the right. other city. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, to, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't say where exactly he was spit out. Like, we don't know that. It says I think he it just said the shore. dry land. Yeah. Yeah. It was dry I mean, land. it's the shore. At the, at the shore. Yeah, yeah, it would be the shore. It has to be right. a coastal area. Right, yeah. For the fish to get there. And then whether he came out, but assistance, maybe somebody saw him, took him in. Yo, you need some food, you need some clothes. Like, we don't know, but he got out. And, and also think about the, like the way he, the way he looked. He had to look because the gastric acid. I'm pretty sure because they said that like um, the history of like that guy James Bartley, the the people that were taken out of the fish, the gastric acid will strip you of your your skin tone and all that. So he would have looked. Your hair is completely gone. Mm -hmm. So no eyebrows, no hair, no. And you know he looked you, like powder. Right. You know completely. <laughs> Who he remember like powder? <laughs> I just gave my age, dog. Powder. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like Casper, the friendly ghost, coming towards you. Yeah. So you know. Or when Dave Chappelle plays the crackhead. Oh man. <laughs> no, but that's that's something that just pointed out to me because I think the the spirit is pointing that out to be like, 
you know, um, revival, salvation is coming. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just preparing it because it's, you know, for you to leave out. He said it was a great city. So to the Lord, he realized that Nineveh was a great city. But to leave out the part of their wickedness and everything. Yeah. Mm. That's a great point. Yeah, that was that's just, a, yeah, that's just that's, something that pointed something out to me should, when I read. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. But. Because it says great city twice in this chapter. Mm. He says Um, it to the T, arise, go to Nineveh. He says the same thing, that great city. And then he leaves out the wickedness and all of that. He just says, this is, he just says, go mm. preach the message that I tell you. So now it's like, he recognized Nineveh. He gave uh, Jonah the marching orders. And then he's like, I mean, arise. And then he's like, okay, here's the message, Mm -hmm. you know? So this, in verse three, should have been in the first chapter, right? Yeah, that Jonah <laughs> right. was probably and thinking he listened. Yeah, that I should have listened the first time. But he did, he followed orders now. He's doing what the Lord told him to do. Mm-hmm. So he went and he proclaimed the message that the Lord gave him. Right? So they were 40 days away from judgment. 40 days more and mm-hmm. Nineveh will be overthrown. So that's how close, that's how close they were to the you know, the tipping point. Yep. 40 days. Imagine how many years <laughs> the <laughs> Lord sat there and watched them right. go crazy and go buck wild. And 40 days. Like, and it, it shows again, like, the Lord is, um, patient. he's patient because mm-hmm. his desire is that nobody should perish. Yeah. And even like he's like forty. I let y'all rock, and then forty days before it, I'm still. I'm, I'll give you one last shot. Mm-hmm. Forty days before it, mm-hmm. like at forty days, you think about all the years they've been doing what they're doing. You're like, man, they never gonna change. Right. You know what I mean? That's how you would think, and that's how Jonah, his mind frame was like. These people's been wicked, like they're. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, but forty days, yo, be that. That's the Lord be to the very last. That's mm-hmm. why I feel like even with Noah, I think till the door closed, he was out there telling people to get on that boat. Mm. And he said 40 days. <laughs> See, I love how the Lord is so consistent. <laughs> Word up. <laughs> All right? <laughs> he is very consistent in what he does. To the very end. Yes. And, and did we read five? No. No. So we're going to read five to what? To ten? Yeah. Okay. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Mm -hmm. It says, the people of Nineveh believed God. That's amazing. He used, he just preached eight words. And he said, he just said, yo, 40 days in this place is donezo. Just Mm. eight words. And you know, the thing that I, that I, that that I liked is that he didn't even speak to the king. He said yeah, the word yeah. reached. I like that. Yeah, mm. the like, king. So was he like walking through the town? Through, and yeah, just preaching. And, and yeah, and he the was people repeating that disgruntledly. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Disgr- <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> disgruntledly. <laughs> right. And then people went and told the king, "Was like, yo, there's this crazy, yo, bleached man, out, airless crazy. dude saying that the g- God is about to destroy us." Mm-hmm. But the, it, it looks like the people had had made that decision first, right? Mm-hmm. To do, to do mm. that. And what's dope about that is then it reached the leadership. Mm. And I think in in our country, <laughs> mm. is it the people 
that have to change first right. before the leadership gets a hold of the revival, mm. right? A lot of us, we're always praying for our leaders and wanting them to change, but it's it's us. It's that's our personal point. walks that that's change that will change the leadership. Right? Yeah, really. that's a good point. Yeah, that's great. That's solid. They always say like revival starts with you. Exactly. Yeah. You know, draw a circle around yourself. Mm. And they showed it, you know. It says the people believe and then proclaim the fast. It wasn't just talk. You understand? It says they proclaimed the fast and they put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. So it wasn't just talk. There was action behind it, like true right. repentance. True it's repentance. just not just talk. There has to be fruits, and the fruits was the fasting and the sackcloth. You mm-hmm. know, So that's how you know this was a true repentance that was coming from these people. And, you know, just, just the power in God's word. Yes. That's another he, yes. He preached what God told him to preach. Yes. Mm. And we see the power in that. And we, we understand that even faith is imparted by God. Mm. So that whole, the people believe, is all the glory is, is, is God's. Like, he did that. Like, he, uh, uh, you know, poured his gra- grace out on Nineveh, a bunch of wicked people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and one of the things I also like is that... Um, you see, and he performed no miracles. And I think that's one of the things that kind of like Jesus was alluding to. It's like, yo, like faith based on miracles is not a saving faith. Mm. Faith has to be based on the word of God and trusting him at his word. Right. That's saving faith. Mm-hmm. So you got to trust his word. And they trusted his word by you seeing the action following it. They actually put legs to their faith. You've seen it yeah. because it was based on his word. Mm. Yep. They heard and they believed. Yeah, and then you you wonder like why such a, a a prideful nation who everyone feared would so quickly you know mm-hmm. remove the pride and and basically drop to their knees and then you know what Mike mentioned just it made sense right. you know that the Lord was working in them mm. and those natural disasters was grace you know preparing right. you you know and 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 that's the reason why like you think that. Do we need to clarify what I was saying the other day about meeting? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You know, well, I mean, well, what we talked about, I think it was two weeks ago, about things needing to happen in your life before you hearing the gospel message and you receive it. And we, we talked about um, you. everybody's walk is different, right? So it's not like you need to do the things that I did before the Lord worked in my heart, but there has to be things that soften your heart, right? And and we go through things. The Lord allows things to happen. There may be a death in the family. There may be sickness. There may be you losing your job. Things like that happen in order to soften your heart so that when the gospel, the seeds are, yes. you know, spread mm-hmm. to you, mm-hmm. they, they, they become implanted in that soil. That fertile ground. That fertile ground. And, mm-hmm. and that's what the Lord uses. So if you don't know God, and you find yourself in a place where you feel surrounded by by deep waters. You feel surrounded by darkness. Those are things. That's grace. That's the grace of God drawing you closer to him. Because he's the only way out of that darkness. Right? So when you hear the gospel message, accept it. Believe. You know, and the Lord will come in and he will, just like Jonah says in, in chapter 2, he, he, he brought him out of that pit, out of feeling as if he was in hell and the Lord can do that for anyone out there who's listening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like, yo, what you said is, yo, Ange was straight on point about the leaders. I think about this country and I think about countries, period. Mm. Like, this is exactly how it happened here because, you know, like, the Lord has been putting on my heart revival, revival, but it started with the people Word got to the king, and then he made it law. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? He made it law. Like, nah, this is a decree. This is what's now everybody's under it. You know what I mean? So even if you felt like, oh, I don't know you're on the fence, nah, now the leadership officially made it law. You know, and it's like what you were saying, like, it starts with us, you know, as the people. Once the people start changing their hearts, the leaders is going to have to, like, if you don't roll with the people, you're going to get out. <laughs> you're going to get kicked out. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like the leader, you know, he saw what the, the king saw what the people was uh, going through, like the revival happening. 
he hopped on, he got off his throne, laid his robe aside, it hit him, but it's just, it wasn't just, it didn't just stay there. It, he made it law to now affect right. the whole land, you right. know, and it's so important, like, even with our leaders, like, people that's in government and all of that, like you said, like, us as believers, like, we gotta make, we gotta make our, our voices heard. Mm. Like, this is how we feel, what's going on, like, mm. you can't be, you can't shy away from the issues that, you know, everybody's talking about, all these political issues, if you're a believer and you have a certain stand on something, you have to say it. You have to vote that way. You have to be that way. You have to express that way so it could affect the leadership and get to a point where it becomes law and, yeah. you know, even a decree or even where it's publicly spoken on a big platform, you know, where this is how me as a leader, this is how I feel because this is how the people I represent feel and it's going to affect, right. you know, but it's crazy. Right. I'm reading it now and I'm like, yo, dog, it happened yeah. just like that, like you said. And you know it's awesome. Just to add to that point, um, to see how we've seen a clear example of it, um, is that like change really starts at the grassroots level, right? Mm. Like the whole idea, like I mean, how the Emancipation Proclamation came about with with um, um, Lincoln, it wasn't just he just woke up and decided, oh, I think slavery is bad, and we need to, you know, we need to abolish it. The whole abolition movement started with one woman, Harriet Beecher Stowe. A white woman, young girl, who was the daughter of a minister, of a preacher, mm. and she saw that slavery was wrong, and she wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. And it, it spread through the community, mm. and they started realizing, yes, yeah, slavery is wrong. As white folks, we should not be mistreating black people. Mm. And it, as people's hearts were changing from her book and from her talking to people in the neighborhood and the community, the word went got to Abraham Lincoln mm. and Abraham Lincoln met her this little lady here's this six foot six president meaning this little tiny little five foot and he said to her like you are the little woman that's been causing this you know upheaval right. mm. in America mm. and that's where the Emancipation Proclamation came about because he enc encountered her and he's like Yo, we need to do something but it started with people's hearts mm. from a born again Christian. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I see. Nah, I see. Yo, <laughs> it hit oh. me. It hit me hard. And it just reached now, all the way to the presidential office, and yeah. this is how the you know aboli the abolitionist movement started. That's exactly right. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah, I I heard of that, but just the way you broke it down and how it's so applicable to what we're reading and how. Uh, uh, you know, a, a jurisdiction or a nation or a town could change. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Nah, that that that, that was crazy. And, and it's 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 awesome that you know re revival. You know, it, it started with obedience, right? Mm -hmm. Obedience and being faithful and in and, and, and faithful preaching of God's word. Mm -hmm. And we we don't see faithful preaching mm -hmm. of God's word. Too too often here in in, in America, um, yeah. and I think that that that's where it's going to change. Right, you know, right within the church, like we're talking about within the church body, mm -hmm. that's where we have to become obedient in our lives, our day to day lives. We don't realize how our disobedience is affecting other people around us. Mm -hmm. We were selfish to the point where we just think it's it's between me and God. Mm. But if your walk is not where it needs to be, then the people around you are going to suffer, whether yeah. you know it or not. You're not going to be able to bless them with with gold nuggets that you studied that morning if you're not studying that morning. You know what I mean? So this is where the revival comes with obedience and being faithful in the things you do for the Lord. We've seen it with Jonah. His disobedience almost got everybody, everybody killed. killed. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But his obedience is what brought a whole city to revival. Yeah. Yeah, you know? and you know what, and that's the biggest problem where you see a lot of people where they, you know, where you hear the term victimless crime. You know, there was no crime, or you know, what I do in the privacy in my bedroom, or you know, I watch pornography. It's not hurting anybody. It is. Mm -hmm. Your sins are hurting not only you but the people you love, right. your family, your neighborhood. Like it destroys people. There is no such thing as a victimless crime. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? It it. Destroys. Yeah, Jonah is a perfect example of that. No, yo, I read this. Um, 
I saw this crazy quote. It was by the guy named Alexander Tyler. As you guys was talking about nations, he said that I don't know if you guys ever heard of the cycles of a nation. Mm-hmm. You've heard, you've heard of that? No, I never heard of it. So with the cycle of a nation, he goes like um, initially goes from bondage to spiritual faith, and then it goes from spiritual faith to great courage. Then he goes from great courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to complacency, mm. from complacency to apathy. From apathy to dependency, and then from dependency back again to bondage. Mm. So where do you think we at? <laughs> I, I think right now we're we're teetering between apathy to dependency and going towards bondage. Mm. I think, I think <laughs> that dependency. You I think, think we're in, in entering that dependency? I dependency think you're right. How? What do you to a singular power, whether it's government? Mm. Right. Um, you know, you think it's all set up for the antichrist? Um, not particularly. I just think that, you know, the cycles. If you look at the history of America, it, like it fits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now we're in a a time where people feel entitled to certain things. Yeah. People would rather get universal basic income instead of work right okay. that's that's and that's exactly right you know this, this idea special. where you're dependent um the government owes me to the government or you know feel like you have this special privilege or but that's what i'm saying you don't feel like that's like the beginning of setting it up for the antichrist because that's how he's gonna come where he's gonna want to be worshipped he want everybody's gonna he's gonna want to be bowed down to it's gonna, gonna be center towards him yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. You understand so. what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. like you said, I totally agree with you. Like, you know, one one world government, one religion, one all of this, one, yeah. one, one, is just to center it back to Satan. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's what that's 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 that was the the goal at the end of the day. He wanted to be like the Most High God. He wanted to be above God. Because he wants to lead to that bondage. Bondage, right. right, right. And breaking out of that bondage is what spiritual spiritual faith. <laughs> that's the only way you could break out of that bondage mm. and then you get into this point where you know the um the blessing or which one is that the abundance. spiritual faith to great courage and then great courage to liberty then liberty to abundance it's the abundance that be jacking people up yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> because you don't point it back to god you think that you yeah, bring it back to yeah, self life gets good right let the be cake you, get, you know <laughs> cuz you you're so how many steps removed from the spiritual part? Yeah. You forget, not realizing it's the spiritual that got you out of this bondage. Right. And then you slowly start to forget, and you just end up right back into bondage. Right. So, now, yeah. I definitely see the the dependency part, man. And it's, whether it's dependency on drugs, social mm. media. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just a world of people developing these dependencies on things. No, I agree. Right? Whereas people aren't able to even cope or... Mm-hmm. I, was, I was watching this thing where this guy just with a camera came to this girl and like, oh, are you happy? Just asking if she's happy. And she was like, no. And then she just starts talking about how she's unhappy and she's depressed. And, mm. dog, and I'm just looking at her. I'm like, just like this young girl. No joy, no, no hope, hope. Right. just nothing. And she was like, yeah, when I feel like that, I just go and drink and wait for my friend. And I don't like drinking because I know it, it, it's bad, but that's the only way I could deal. So now you're dependent on you know, substances to try to just make you feel regular, make you feel normal. And a lot of people are suffering from that. Like we, you know, They'll throw uh, mental health, like whatever that means. They, they throw those things out there. Um, and there are people that are really suffering from mental health right. Right, that I think you could diagnose and, and treat and measure. But a lot of people are just dealing with hopelessness, man. Mm-hmm. Mm. Godlessness. And after a while, it'll it'll mess you up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we as, yeah, as Christians, man, like you said, hopelessness, we have to be uh, like hope dealers. You know mm. what I mean to to the world and let them know that there is hope, and they have to see that hope in us. You know, and if we're not living lives 
where we are as Christians exuding that, mm-hmm. you know, so, so, something has to change in your personal life. If when you walk in these streets, people don't see the, the light of Christ in you, you know, that's our job. Um, you know, back to the scripture here. I love, you know, as a veterinarian, I love how even the they made, <laughs> they made the animals wear the sackcloth. You know what I mean? And they even it said even the animals were fasted. Like they was like, don't let them taste or drink anything. You know. So I thought that that is just su- such a, a testament of their the desperation mm. in them and the to get right with God, right? Mm. right? And what we read earlier, we talked about like with with, your, with the soul fainting, like I I I picture their souls fainting, hearing that you have forty days to live, right? Like, mm, can you imagine yeah. God telling you you have forty days to live? Like, if your soul don't faint at that right. point, and I love at the end of verse in verse nine, it says, "Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from His fierce anger, so that we may not perish?" There was no guarantee. That the Lord was gonna have mercy on them, right, right. you know what I mean. But and you have prideful people that will be like, "Oh, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out the way I want to go out." You know what I mean. These mm. people, you know, that's that's the opposite of of what they were they were exhibiting. And I I think that that's so amazing how the Lord had mercy on this group of wicked, right. evil people. You you know, it's I, I really appreciate when you said the animals as a veterinarian. You know why? Because when you said that, because then they said not neither the beast nor herd nor flock to eat, right? Is that this is what you're seeing? I'm I'm looking at it as like that childlike faith, because they don't know nothing about this God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They've been rooted in paganism and serving Dagon and all their other Id- idols, mm. so they don't know anything about the true and living God. So it's like yo, I don't know anything, but I'm a believe, have that childlike faith. I don't know if the animals could sin and cause us to not receive mercy. You, you get what I'm saying? Right, right, it's that right. childlike, because you know how kid children's like, is my puppy going to go to heaven? Right. Or is, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. It's that childlike faith. We're just going to believe and we're going to do whatever it takes yeah. to, you know. Yeah, we're not going to, we, we're not going <laughs> to um, guess. Yeah, we ain't going to take no chances <laughs> and we, guess. We, we right, guess. Right, 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 right. Uh, look, at, look at verse 10. It says, God took note of what they did. Right, that right. They turn from their evil ways. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, like God, he saw their works. This, it wasn't just talk. Right. He saw what they were doing. Mm-hmm. I love, like, to me, them, you know, making the animals not eat. Like, to me, that's the equivalent of, like, rich people burning their money. Because mm. that was their, their livelihood. That's the way they live. Mm. That's, if, they, if they have no food source, right. they're going to die regardless. You know what mm. I mean? So if their animals perish because they're yeah. not feeding them or whatever. So they literally, like you said, they didn't take any chance. They didn't take any chance. They were like, if we're going to die, we're going to die doing this the right way to this God. Right. You know what I mean? And if we all had that, you know, like if I'm going to live for God, I'm going to live for God the right way. I'm not taking any chances right. on how I walk with the Lord. You mm-hmm. know, and uh, we could learn some things from Nineveh, right? <laughs> You know, from the, their attitude, their repentance, um, but yeah, man, yeah. That, that's that's what I saw. No, and I think that's probably the greatest miracle in this book. Like when you're told, oh, it's Jonah and the fish. It's every everything's nah. about the fish, the fish. It's the revival, bro. It's the revival. It's the revival. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, going back to what we was talking about with the resurrection, <clears throat> the reason why I see that. Is because, okay, so when we read chapter 1, when we get to 17, it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And like you were saying, you know, Christ was pointing that towards his death, you know? So we see Jonah, you know, that that was supposed to signify his death, like being in that fish three days, three nights. Mm -hmm. When we read his prayer, we get to verse 10, it says, So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah on dry land. Same thing like with Christ. The grave couldn't hold him. You know what I mean? It, like the grave had to spit him out because it couldn't hold him because he was righteous. You understand what I'm saying? And then when you get through chapter 3 and you get to the end, then God saw their works and they turned from their evil way. So it's like like I'm seeing this typology of Christ. You know, right. when he 
died three days in the grave. The grave spits him out, you know, and he represents, you know, um, the resurrection represents that he died for everybody's sin. And through that, salvation comes in this, in this verse 10. So we see in it, verse 17, we see in the death. Verse 10, in the, last, the last verse in chapter 2, we see in the resurrection. And the last verse in chapter 3, we see in salvation. And that's how I see the gospel is represented here. Yeah. Exactly how Christ had to die, he had to resurrect, and through his resurrection, salvation came through everybody. And how did he die? He was, you know, innocent blood, thrown into the hands of man, into the water, death, so, you know, and death was swallowed up in victory, mm -hmm. spit out, whole nation, like, and a Jew had to die, you know, the for all the nations to be saved. But was he an innocent man? No, absolutely not. And, that's, was an and that's, that's the thing and, and for that's, them to say that. Right. That's how I'm seeing this, like what Christ, when, why, why, like what Ralph said, Christ used Jonah as far as, you know, um, that's the sign that I'm going to give you with Jonah. And it's crazy how we read it again. He was like, I'm going to use Nineveh as, as witnesses to Yah because Nineveh truly repented. You know, so salvation really came to the nation of Nineveh. But reading it, you know, like I said, I was reading it over and over again, but this is how I saw it. Like you're seeing the death here and at the end of chapter one, you know, um, him being vomited out. That's the resurrection. And through the and after the resurrection, you see salvation came to this whole city. So you're seeing the the gospel message right there. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that typology. <clears throat> I just yeah. don't know how far to extend it. No, no, no. I yeah, you, you, like, but, like, like yeah. I mean, everybody's. You I know. think the I think the purpose is to look for Christ in every book, right? That's, and that's and right. I think that's what it is. You know what I'm saying, and this clearly, it's super easy because Christ referenced Jonah, right? Right, right. right. But, right. You know, you know. When I read it, to me, it's the time frame, right? That and he's referencing a story that all of them should be familiar with. Mm. So. Maybe pulling those imageries that we're seeing, they were able to also do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But you know, to me specifically, Christ was like this time frame of three days mm -hmm. being dead for three days and then resurrection. That's gonna be the final sign you guys are gonna get. No, and I totally agree yeah, with totally you. Yeah, and that's why, and that's why I see it. Everything else that you said. Like, yeah, yeah, that's why I see it because it's like before, like I said, I read Jonah so many times. I went through it just like, you know, you know, a rebellious prophet, revival. That's what I've always saw. Right. But just reading it now again and again, I'm starting to see. Just like how we went through Ruth, the Kingsman Redeemer, you know, that's like you're seeing it like you're seeing Christ to the point. And that's the only reason that I feel like with the, um, you know, I think I shouldn't say I feel, but I think <laughs> I don't want to be in my feelings, but <laughs> always in your feelings. But yeah, you know, that's why I think to that point of, you know, him, the deaf and Sheol, like them using these words is not, it's just not for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, and it's not when you, until you said it, that first episode where you was like, he was an innocent. I'm like, so then why call him innocent? I think the Holy Spirit was putting those things in there for us where we're here now who have the whole completed word of God, now we're able to see Christ so clearly. Right. You know, so like, so when you said innocent, I was like, you're absolutely right. Why would he say innocent? It's because he's that typology. Right. You know, you're seeing the typology, Jesus understanding that. But the vomiting up out of the fish after the prayer, I'm like, that. That's now I get why you was like the resurrection, you know? <laughs> and then after, you, after I read that, I was like, the end of three, Salvation comes. That's exactly how the gospel happened. It's through the death, the burial, yeah, and the resurrection, resurrection of Jesus Christ that salvation came to all men. And you're talking about the Gentiles here. And you're talking about the Jews. <laughs> this, this, this is the only book that you're seeing this revival happening right. with a whole Gentile nation. And, and the awesome things that, as you're saying, that is the, the tremendous rebelliousness of Jonah is a picture of how the Jews rejected Christ. Right. And then the gospel went to the Gentiles. It went to the Gentiles. So it's a picture of like even seeing all this and doing all this, he still rebelled and he had the law. He had the full, he understood who God was and he still rejected and rebelled. Right. And that, and then you see, because he, he wasn't, he refused to repent, but then the Gentile repented like 
that. Like that. And we see <laughs> and we saw it in both instances. We saw it on the ship. Right. And we saw it with Nineveh. And what's crazy is the Lord is like pursued Jonah all the way through. It's crazy that you say he pursued Jonah all the way through because he's like, like what you read earlier, the nation of Israel has to bring this. This is how it has to happen. You know what I'm saying? It goes through Israel that all nations be blessed. Even if you guys are rebellious, that's my will. And it's still going to happen. Right. I'm going to make it happen. Right. You understand know what I'm saying? Like, like, and that's how I'm looking at it now, where it's like, yeah, Jonah could have, it could have went through somebody else. The Lord is mm-hmm. like, yeah, I could have chosen, but I'm, I'm trying to prove a point here yeah. that through the nation of Israel, salvation is going to come through to the world. So it's like, dog, it's, it's, after reading it just now, I'm like, yeah, it's clear. Yeah, the typology, the gospel is there. Some great points. Nah, that's, I, I see it. Yeah. All right. Mm-mm-mm. God's mercy, baby. He loves all of us. Man. And then chapter four, you know, something else I see. We'll, we'll wait till then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to spoil it. <laughs> Got the pe- want the people to come back. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, I just said everything. And, yeah, all right, so I don't have to watch the other. I don't have to listen to the other stuff, yeah. No, no, y'all got to come back. I got, I got some other th- I'll save it. I'm not we could get the listens and the views. Mm-mm. Amen. All right, man. It's a wrap. Uh, so, that, what was, uh, what were the people in Nineveh doing? Childlike, uh, they were childlike faith. Childlike no, faith. Not that. What? Uh, the sackcloth on the animals. No, damn, you guys said it. What? Not taking any chances. Oh, oh okay. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. If you're if you're listening to this right now, maybe you're feeling, you know, lost. You're feeling despondent. You're feeling something. And if this is resonating to you maybe you shouldn't take a chance word yes yeah. maybe you're like wait these guys are talking about the gospel these guys are talking about jesus christ who died for the sins of mankind and that salvation is only through him there's no other name under heaven that man could be saved you don't know man you can only got f- you can only have 40 days left b <laughs> after hearing days. this message man so um yeah, you know, we all got to the point where we <laughs> we didn't want to take any chances. <laughs> um, and, you know, the gospel We're message is, is simply believing in Jesus Christ and um, you'll get to spend eternity with him yeah. in heaven and not be separated eternally in hell from him. God is good. Everything that he does is good. We just don't understand it sometimes. Um and he, he gave up everything so that we can have everything. Um, so if you don't want to take that chance like we didn't, just um, uh, during your private time or you could just, uh, along with us, just confess your faith to Jesus Christ and believe and that's as simple as that. And the one thing that I would add too is not only for the unbelievers, but for the, the Christians out there, you may have 40 days left with the uh, living in that disobedient lifestyle mm. that you currently living in until the Lord sends that whale. <laughs> so get right, man, because mm. the Lord, look what the Lord can do to people who are faithful and obedient to him. Like you could be that person that the Lord wants to use to strike revival yeah. Maybe just in your household, right? right? Mm-hmm. Not even just in your neighborhood or, or America, but the Lord might want to use you to save your house, mm-hmm. right? So you may have 40 days on that clock before the Lord is fed up with you, man. So so come back home, man. And I like to add, if you in the belly mm-hmm. right now, you might, your 40 days might have been <laughs> up or whatever, <laughs> and the fish had to come. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you ran and the storm came and you got thrown off the ship. And right now you in the belly, cry out. You know, if you're hearing this right now, cry out. That's all the Lord, that's what the Lord wanted from Jonah from day one. You know, Amen. you know, it's, if Jonah cried out, 
you know, it wouldn't even have got this far, but that's what, you know, he didn't want to do that. So if you're in the belly, cry out. If you're in the sea, cry right out. Up. If you're in the storm, cry right out. Up. Wherever you're at, cry right out. Up. You know, that's what the Lord wanted. And just like what Jonah said in his prayer, the, the Lord heard him. Amen. Amen.